Theater. Hello and welcome again to the Fighting Game Theater. And we're doing something uh, decidedly different and a shade more British today. I have with me uh, Sir Matthew of uh, the Botchamania fame uh, with me today. And we are reviewing... It's your part. King of Fighters, <laughs> the film. <laughs> Not movie. That's for a filthy Americans. <laughs> that went better than I could hope. I was like, please have an awkward pause. Uh, so that's perfect. Um, so yes, uh, I I just I didn't know what to do with this film in particular. Like, should I review it myself? Should I do a let's watch? And then I was like, I I have to make someone else suffer with me. I I just can't do it alone. Um, have you watched this film beforehand? I I, I think you have, but refresh my memory. Yeah, before you asked me to do this, and I'm quite flattered by that, when you asked me if I could do this, I felt so good. I was walking around like I was five foot seven. And uh, I had watched it uh, maybe very early on when it was first released, because mm. I was really into SNK and specifically King of Fighters. Because at that point, they weren't doing much else after the Playmore thing. Uh, uh. They got uh, released in the UK on PlayStation 2. Like the first one was uh, 2000, 2001 compilation stuff and i was there going look at the beautiful sprite artwork look at how good king of fighters is king of fighters yay um 13 was going to come out which was the proper version of what 12 was right i was like wow a film a film this is fantastic yay you know <laughs> nothing bad has come out of films you sweet summer child um because I, I always think when you're in a bit of like because yeah 13 you know I, it wasn't quite out yet i always kind of think when like a movie comes out it's like oof that that's either you're at the height of your popularity or you're at the you're at the lowest point of your popularity or relevance uh, when a movie comes out. So it kind of depends. So when I heard this was coming out, I was just like, "Ooh, times are tough at old SNK." Even though they weren't as tough, because like you said, the the Playmore thing was was kind of the uh, the the dark saga of SNK. But yeah, I also watched this when it was when it was fairly new and. I was like, oh, yeah, this is I have to make this a movie night. Everyone that loves SNK, come and watch this, and then you'll love SNK a little less. It'll be great. Um, and Street Fighter got it a long time ago. Street Fighter has lots of adaptations, and it, it was about time SNK um, also gets cursed as well. Absolutely. SNK here to prove that they can hang with Capcom <laughs> years after the new Geo <laughs> stopped being made. Yeah. So King of Fighters is a Canadian and Chinese co-production. Uh, it was filmed in Vancouver, British Columbia, and not, in fact, Southtown, as, as, <laughs> as I was really hoping. <laughs> Um, uh, it was made. Uh, it was made for the tidy sum of how much, Matthew? According to the ever reliable IMDb, uh, ten million dollars. That's less than Aliens in 1986. That isn't that amazing. I I I'm speechless right now. <laughs> Maybe ten million. You said that ten million Canadian dollars sounds more feasible. The, yeah, which basically amounts to like three dollars in the in the rest of the world. Um, I don't know if it's Canadian. I'm assuming it is. I I don't know about the uh, the uh, inner workings of, of this co-production to that level. Um, and uh, yes or no, did it make that money back? If you need to ask that question, <laughs> I think it's a guarantee. Uh, no, not quite. <laughs> no. It's like the uh, goddamn. Their expectations were low, but fuck. Um, yeah, it apparently only made about two million dollars. Now, this was supposed to be a straight to DVD production, so that might be accounting for a really, really limited theatrical run. Because hmm. I can't believe you were that much of a failure for like a, a straight to DVD thing. Like you have to have made that back, but. The actual home video sales for stuff like this is never really like outright said that often. You have to really dig deep for those numbers. But the fact that you didn't even make back ten million dollars is 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 a kind of accomplishment, I think. Um, I, yeah. I, this should have not been a straight to DVD release. It should have been straight to Neo Geo CD release. Just put it on that console only, and let only the most hardcore SNK fans be able to get access to it. 
Oh, in that case, then, all it take was five people to have purchased that and the console, <laughs> and they would have made the money back. And and the load times for the Neo Geo CD longer than the movie yeah. itself. So uh, it was directed by Gordon Chan, a veteran of Hong Kong cinema since the 1980s. Um, he has helmed such classics as Inspector Pink Dragon, uh, The Royal Tramp, The Royal Tramp 2, Game Boy Kids, which I really need to watch now because it's called Game Boy Kids. <laughs> And finally, Beast Cops, which is, I I passed out when I saw that title. I I need to see Beast Cops. That, um, they're all good, but the first one you read, all I could hear was, <laughs> I'd inspect her, Pink Dragon. Oh! <laughs> uh, his only pre-King of Fighters uh, film that most people would know is Jet Li's Fist of Legend. Uh, a, a legendary Jet Li film. And he is also uh, known much, much less famously for the 2003 Jackie Chan stinker, The Medallion, um, which is usually thrown around as like between this and The Tuxedo as Jackie Chan's worst film. So I can't wait. Um, and while uh, Gordon Chan did not direct it, he was the writer of John Woo's Hard Boiled, which, oh. I mean, I'm not going to say Hard Boiled is most known for, like, its writing, but certainly not, like, uh, a bad factor of it. It's mostly about the action and how cool um, Chow Yun-Fat is in that. But when I read that, I was like, holy shit, that's not, a, you know, that's a that's a big credit so that's pretty cool. Um, anyway, how could they have screwed this up? Let's find out. Um, we open up on a woman's shower scene because if you are adapting a fighting game into anything, you have to have a shower scene. <laughs> um, and it is my Shirinui uh, is, is the woman here, but you would not know that to look at her for a good long time because one thing about King of Fighters is that until someone introduces who they are, you have no idea who are they supposed to be. What, what do you what do you feel about the wardrobe of King of Fighters in general? Let's just get this out of the way right now. Well, it, <laughs> uh, not much, as you said. If they're trying to cosplay as the people who are in the game, there's that they've gone very bad there. But before the uh, you know homage to Street Fighter Two, the animated movie, we've. Uh, just before the Vega fight kicks in with the shower scene. Yep. Um, no, we don't start off with the shower scene. We start off with four production companies getting uh, credits to the film. Um, in association with, in association with, in association with. It, it's an enigma wrapped in a riddle, <laughs> wrapped in a conundrum. That's never a good sign for any film. So, it is not. Uh, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> we, the, 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 she's the more a, associations yeah. means everyone tried to pull together their money and all they could come up with was 10 million yes and i'm sure it was evenly split uh, had you heard of any of these companies beforehand <sighs> i think well go usa which is a big chinese movie company is is thrown around in there but other than that i i didn't recognize a single one um Mai Shirinui is played by Maggie Q, uh, who has a you know pretty extensive IMDb, but what I know her best from uh, is being, uh, unfortunately I forget the character's name, but she was the female uh, agent in Mission Impossible 3, which I think given the uh, popularity of Mission Impossible is probably what people have seen her most in, and I thought she was quite good in that Um but uh, as she gets out of her shower, she looks into the mirror, a regretful, sornful look on scrawled on her face because she realizes she's in King of the Fighters. <laughs> womp womp. Um, you're right. Maggie Q is, I think, by far and away the biggest star to appear in this film. If mm. there'd been a fire on set and everybody had died, the headline would read, Maggie Q dies. Please, please see pages 63 and 64 for the other people. Yeah, essentially, because I, I okay, I get what they they're doing. We we have to get the fan favorites, and somebody on the, the you know the writing team or whatever put King of Fighters into Google, and the first thing that probably pops up is like a picture of Mai, and they're like, well, that she's the main character, right? So 
she's kind of the main character here um, because we start off with her and she puts on her officially branded KOF earpiece, uh, which transports her into the fighting dimension <laughs> so, he, so she can square off with some guy who you're going to go this entire fight scene all up until the credits, until you actually find out who this guy is supposed to be. And he's supposed to be Mr. Big, a Southtown bad guy that was never as cool as Geese Howard. What do you think about Mr. Big? Well, first of all, she puts that in, and suddenly the fighter's dimension, which also now is aged badly because it's that one Black Mirror episode where the dude Pretty has much. sex with his friend. And- <laughs> We're in a freezer in exchange cheesy one-liners with my mm-hmm. wearing fishnets, so at least they kept that aspect of fighting games accurate. And there's a Caucasian dude in a big fuzzy jacket with sticks. <laughs> Wait a minute. This can't be famously black art of fighting boss Mr. Big, played by Sam Hargrave. <laughs> <laughs> and you're right. Uh, in the credits, it's him. Uh, later on, he'll appear as the man outside of the big, I guess it's a hotel, whatever they're going, and staying at, and he's like, oh, wow, it's that person I had a fight with. Wow, in the fighter's dimension. And he's a security officer. While they're talking, behind them, there's a black guy who also happens to be bald, doing nothing. Which, <laughs> I'm not saying this is quite Hitchcockian, but I'm like, hang on, wait a minute. Did they book him, and then after the scene go, oh, no, Mr. Biggs actually, oh, 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 let's just not tell him. There's there's something here where there's a couple of characters where I feel like they're okay, they're supposed to be playing, you know, so and so from King of Fighters, but then I was like, there's a there's another person that could have played them right there. I always like to think in, in movies like this, when the acting is so bad, it's because all of these are real martial artists or or stunt people. And they can stunt and fight, but they can't act. And that's all they could get. You know, that's the mystery. But if this guy, this this Caucasian man in the fuzzy coat with sticks, could you not? Could he not have worn a bald cap? Could he not have at least gotten a beard or put on glasses or or been more black or you know whatever it needs to be? <laughs> uh, why couldn't you have just done that rather than you know just okay? You did the you did the homework by putting him in a big fuzzy coat and gave him sticks. So you're gonna do that, but like his face is right there. You can, you can, and it happens throughout this film where I think everyone is massively miscast. Well, maybe not every single person, but a lot. Um, and, uh, we, we get transported into this. The, the one liners are exchanged, uh, like you said. So I do like this aspect sort of where, when we go into the fighter dimension, we kind of get our costume from King of the Fighters. There's a certain Sailor Moon Power Rangers appeal there, like we're going through our magical transformation, except there is no magical transformation. They just appear in their clothes. But imagine if Iori just starts spinning around and then the strap (laughs) comes out between his legs and he screams something like, you know, Orochi Saga! That'd be so sick. But they don't do that. It It just kind of is a thing that happens. But I do like them trying to normalize like how the fighting takes place in this one dimension i think in another production it would it could have been like quite cool but in this it's like no this king of fighters is just supposed to be a regular martial arts tournament hey everyone from around the world join a team and come and fight and be the king of the fight. That's, that's it. So I don't know why they needed to go this extra mile. I just assumed they were like, oh, it's too weird for normal people to accept that everyone can throw fireballs and, and uh, there's like a godlike boss at the end. So it has to be in another dimension. Why do you, do you have any theories about why they chose this route? Well, first of all, with King of Fighters being three on three, the mm. best of SNK, Smash Brothers before it was Smash Brothers, all right. appearing uh, together. They would need a budget of at least you know twelve million Canadian dollars to make that. <laughs> so I can see why they went. Oh, pulls to that. Uh, well, we haven't even got costumes for the real characters. Let's just modify it slightly, use bits and pieces of it, and have some sort of fighters dimension where it's kind of like every anime from the 2010 onwards where they go inside the game, but (gasps) they can die for real. Yeah. 
Um, and I can see what they're doing with... Look, and again, when we're talking about this film, I'm looking at it as you're looking at it, as somebody who likes video games, likes good films and action, is pretty open-minded. But you look at it from that nerd's perspective that has played the games and is only watching this film for that. I'm sure there's lots of these films where stunt people get together and go, I want to properly act. I'm sick of being, you know, right. this famous actor, but from behind and falling on concrete so you don't see my face. <laughs> um, and that's absolutely fair enough. I'm having a go at people making films like that. Do what you want. Yay, trauma. Uh, but yes, <laughs> uh, we are the nerds who this was also aimed at. So that's why we're going to say these things because of stuff like, uh, well, look, I have a giant tournament. And let's face it, that isn't the best storyline in the world. Uh, near enough, every yeah. fighting game, or well, these 2D ones, have been some sort of variation on uh, Enter the Dragon. Look, I'm having a big tournament. I've invited you to <laughs> this place. Show up and get beaten up. Oh, boy. Uh, and despite something bad happening at the end of every single King of Fighters since 94, they all still get there. So I can see why they're trying to do something different. Yeah, no, I, I, I guess so at the same time. I just have a, a feeling that they're like, well, we can't just have characters shooting fireballs and everything be normal. It's normal in KOF world or Street Fighter land, you know, but um, for this, like, I... I well, we uh, how then we're going to have to explain how they can do all this shit. And I think if they 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 thought they're doing a shortcut by saying, oh, they go in this crazy like uh, they go into the digiverse, and then they can fight, and then you get special powers. That's more palatable to the masses. But I mean, who is really to say? And in, in terms of nerds, you know, us watching this stuff, I I understand how you can't have every character looking accurate to the games, especially many costumes in KOF. Mice. Uh, specifically, of course. But, like, can you not stay within the same color scheme? Can she not wear red once? That's all I'm saying. Like, she she doesn't need to uh, have the full, like, my ninja costume, but, like, purple. There's so much purple in this movie. I'm, I'm going to get to it. it. It really started to bother me unreasonably for a little <laughs> while. Um, but she fights Mr. Big. I it's It's not a bad fight. It is a fight. There's some video gamey, flippy whippy shit that Mai does. Um, Mr. Big flies into like some conveniently placed boxes. Uh, and then a Medusa head from Castlevania arrives <laughs> right on time. And the two kind of look at it and then don't acknowledge it. And then they just continue fighting <laughs> until Mai makes a comment about Mr. Big's uh, coat. Do you remember his comeback to, to her line? Uh, my mom bought me this. Uh, I think it's that, or I'm in the pink today, wubba wubba. <laughs> you spunky kid, I hate spunk. Um, uh, my grabs Mr. Big's tie, and what does she do here, Math? It looks like she botches a running bulldog. <laughs> they did 15 takes, and that was the best one. Like, what's happening? She, like, grabs him, and then she just, like, time fast forwards, and then she slides under, like, a shelf, and I don't know what happens, but that seemingly knocks Mr. Big out. My collects the KOF orb, um, and then that we can, we can see what they're going for here, that matches in KOF dimension literally happen within the frozen time. Uh, because right before she went to this dimension, there was like a little drop of water coming off her earpiece, and it's still dropping mid-drop when she comes out of the fight. So these fights happen in like one microsecond in real time. Again, I don't think we need this added thing. I, it doesn't it doesn't play into the story at all. There's not some weird time issue or or you know something important is happening to the story. It's just a cool thing that I guess they needed to happen. Um, at, that's at least my take on it. Yeah, I think they wrote it down and then handwritten on the script, the whoever came up with it, said, this will look really cool. <laughs> I think a lot of the script said that, like in multiple pages, uh, this will look really cool. Wait, what? But why, why is it happening? This will look really cool. Oh, okay. Nerds um, will dig this. <laughs> I did not dig it. I'm a pretty big one. Um, we then get our catchy opening title screen that I actually liked. It made me feel like it was the ending theme song of like an anime. There was something about it where I was like, eh, this is fine. 
as soon as you see faceless, completely covered, uh, like black and ninja designs, you know you're yeah. in for a low budget treat of a martial <laughs> arts film. The more of those people, it's the same dude played from different angles and different scenes, you know it's going to be good. When he shows yeah. up in the intro of the thing yeah. you're about to watch, um, there was absolutely nothing here that could have been King of Fighters related. Uh, it was just the most generic. It probably off Fiverr.com. So <laughs> I'll point this out because I need to feel, just to point it out at some point or other, on the IMDB <laughs> trivia page, yeah. some hideous nerd doing us all proud by going on and say, in the film... Mai is the girlfriend of Ayori Yagami. But in the games, Mai is the self-proclaimed fiancé to Andy Bogard. <laughs> also in the movie, her cup size is 30A, but in the games, it's 28 double F. Jesus Christ. It's triple H, her size in the game. Um, <laughs> well, for all the yeah, screen time I, she gets. <laughs> I, I, I made note of this as well because... Okay, well, not 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 the breast size, but <laughs> my and Iori Gami going steady in this movie. I don't think I can think of two characters in KOF that have less association than my and Iori. I don't know if they've ever interacted aside from like baked in dialogue when her team fights like uh, Team Orochi, right? Yeah. Um, Oh, but sorry. they can't get every character from the roster in there, and they already have Terry, so they're not going to put Andy. Of course they're not going to put Andy. But Mai's a woman character in the movie, so she has to be fucking someone, right? But, you know, Andy's not it. So, of course, Iori, that makes perfect sense. A, no, it doesn't make perfect sense. And B, Mai could just not be romantically linked to anybody. That That's that, that was my, like, take on it. But, but Iori, like, it, it's not even a thing that really matters that much. They could not have been together doesn't change the story at all. Like, it doesn't come into play with their relationship all that much. So uh, I, I don't know what's going on there. Um, uh, Iori Yagami is played by Will Yun Lee, who I think most people recognize as the man behind Wei Chen in Sleeping Dogs. Uh, and he does a huh? really good job there. And I actually like him. What do, what do you feel about uh, Mr. Iori Yagami in this film? I liked him in this opening scene where I can appreciate mm-hmm. he isn't uh, emo or wearing kink leather gear, but mm-hmm. he does have his hair dyed a bit red, so you know it's him. This I is a good that. start. If there's just like a one scene where you could see it like pretty clearly, and I was like, oh wow, that's that's the level, huh? That that he's dyed a little bit red, and I get it. Dyeing someone's hair like bright red in a movie is like, why is his hair like that? Again, no one questions it in KOF, but in a feature film, like I I don't I don't understand why would someone's hair be red? <laughs> but he, <laughs> since since he doesn't have the strap between his legs, you know you wouldn't know it's Iori Yagami until someone says, "Oh, sorry, Mister Yagami, you yes. don't need you don't you don't need an in- invite because Mister Big, as you alluded to before, is also the doorman." Oh, hi, Johnny. And, uh, I didn't realize it was you. <laughs> oh, hi, Mr. Big. Hello, I am Yagami, owner of the Yagami Fishing Company from 96. <laughs> uh, your father was Danny Yagami. All right, all right, they get it, they get it, you know. <laughs> um, uh, Will, Will Yun Lee, he also, like, you know, he's never had the role that really uh, got him there. But when I looked at him, he played the main bad guy in 007 Die Another Day. Well, he sort of played the main bad guy. He played him in the opening scene. Um he was oh, also that's in, him. Shit. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I only realized this uh, when I watched Die. Like, I unfortunately watched Die Another Day not too <laughs> long ago. And then I was like, yeah, Die Another Day is awesome. And then I watched it again. It's, it's actually not awesome. Um, he was also a bad guy in Elektra, the, the Marvel movie Elektra, for those that don't remember. Oh, wow, yeah. And he also played the Silver Samurai only in name uh, in The Wolverine, the Japanese The Wolverine movie. Oh, because he plays Silver Samurai as his character, but then they just made the Silver Samurai into another thing, the weird suit of mecha armor that yeah. an old guy wears. So not quite that. He also had a small role in Rock the Dwayne Johnson's Rampage. That's the last thing of note. I, I, I was able to research on the guy. I actually forget. I watched Rampage, but I don't really <laughs> remember him in it, unfortunately. Um 
So you mentioned before that they're going to a hotel and yeah, you're probably right, but the, cause there's a lot that takes place in a hotel. There's like most of the movie takes place in a hotel uh, later and I'm not sure if it's the same part or it's connected, but they're currently, uh, Maya and Yuri are heading towards the Boston Cultural Museum private event. And out of all the places I could imagine that a KOF tournament <laughs> or story would take place. Boston has to be in the top 50 somewhere. It's like, why just not call it South Town? The South, like, that's all you need. You have to change a sign. That's all you need to do. And, like, I, that would have gotten a pop from me. If you saw South Town written anywhere in this movie, how would you react? Oh, I'd, I'd, react, I'd react very strongly for a sign that says, Go South Town Red Sox. <laughs> <laughs> go, go south town orochis you know like oh. i don't even know what they would call it because south town's really fun south town looks like miami but they can't film in miami so because they're filming in vancouver and vancouver vancouver is distinctly very um uh west coast like not too far from like seattle and washington and of course that plays into the fact that seattle comes into play but again if i can think of any place that a kof thing would take place it's it's just the 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 birthplace of grunge rock and kof that makes total sense to me but for whatever reason this bit takes place in boston um and like you said before, when Mai walks by the doorman, she shares a knowing look with him. Um, and I like this bit just because it's so silly that it, it's like, oh, by day, I'm a doorman or a fisherman. But by night, I, I could I could be a king of the fighter, you know, and yeah. it's it's one of those things that is very silly, but at least it's something that's kind of unique about this. Like when you said, well, they wanted to do something different, and it certainly is different. I can't say many other fighting game adaptations do anything this out of the box, I guess. Yeah, that's a good point, Matt. Uh, once you're getting over the fact that they were, uh, a white guy took a black guy's position, but as an American wrestling fan, I think I'm used to that by now. Um, <laughs> I can appreciate that that is a nice idea, and enables them to go back and forth from Boston to Vancouver <laughs> to South Town to wherever they want to go. So, <laughs> All right, so cut to five idiots in a car. <laughs> um, one of them complains very loudly, and they're doing something. And then we go to the next scene. It's not clear. They're, they're, they're investigating something in, that's happening down at the Boston Cultural Museum private event. Uh, none of them are named, so... When I first saw this film, I was like, okay, that that's some generic group of agents. Uh, and that's it. That's all I thought. Because um, no one no one has a name yet. And, and how wrong we are. Um, Chizuru from the KOF games, uh, the Orochi saga, I think, almost exclusively. I don't remember. Was she in 94? No. Okay. So she's is she distinctly only in ninety five to ninety seven? Uh, she's ninety six, I believe. She appears as the sub boss. Uh, I know okay, this. Yeah, sub boss. I know this because she's a complete bastard. Um, oh, you mean unlike the other SNK bosses? Yes, but she's the bastard sub boss. There's worse <laughs> after her. Well played, sir. Um, <laughs> All right, there's this... Okay, I was talking about purple before, and this is where it really starts to bother me. There's a shot of Iori, Mai, and Shizuru all walking towards the camera, and all of them are wearing purple. That, to me, like, from a production design standpoint, is an absolute nightmare. Like, why would you costume every... Unless... There's a strict dress code at the Boston Cultural Museum private event where you either have to wear dark purple like Iori, light purple like Mai, or a pale violet like Chizuru. And I'm just looking at this. I don't know why it stuck out. But I, I guess it's like everyone just dressed like Grimace today for, for this Boston Cultural Museum private event. It's so weird to me. Um Maybe it's like a secret you, thing, like yeah, on yeah, like, maybe. like like gay day at Disneyland. <laughs> Go wear <laughs> red. It's like, maybe it's like if you wear purple, oh, you're all you know, wink wink in on the King of Fighters stuff. Everyone wear purple. But everyone in general is either just wearing black, 
black, maybe with a pop of red, but it's a lot of like black, purple, and red, and that's it. It's just really strange. Like, you know, uh, some movies you could look at, like, like even the Street Fighter Van Damme movie, they tried their best by the end of the film to make everyone look like what they're wearing in the games through various storyline reasons. Like, oh, Honda's shirt gets all ripped off, so uh, it tatters around his uh, his waist, so it kind of looks like he's dressed like a sumo. Oh, Zangief needs to uh, pull off his clothes for, like, whatever reason. And uh, Ryu and Ken, oh, they're dressed like this because that's what the bison troopers wear. That's yeah. why, and I kind of appreciate that, but this, there just seems to be no rhyme or reason for for a lot of their costuming decisions. So I don't really know what's 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 up with that. Um, You're right. Even though Grandel Bush, for some reason, just shows up as a boxer. <laughs> uh, yeah, but you're right cl- uh, to interrupt. Yeah, you're right. Uh, I think this was dying for... <laughs> they could have easily covered this. They had like a one... Instead of having like uh, an assistant producer or a DP or anything, they should have had token nerd on set and suggest this. There was like one bit why I, I always going, damn it, it's a shame we had to wear purple for this super secret King of Fighters event that Shizuru set up, I would love to be wearing a giant dog collar right now and my trademark, whatever, just didn't get cut up, cut off. Like horribly is, overdubbed as he's walking with his back to the camera. There's there's a lot of bad overdubbing in this in general, so it would not be out of place. Um, so this is another scene, you know, that, that really bothers me, is that purple-clad Iori and purple-clad Mai then sit down in the auditorium and there's a bunch of purple seats and it's just so much purple. And I'm like, is this like that one level from Bard versus the Space Mutants where you have to like collect all the purple objects? Oh, well, I mean, that was yeah. a good throwback. I was going to go with when they sit down, does the purple blend together? So it's just a room full of heads like in Return to Oz. <laughs> I don't know what, okay, this is the last purple thing I'll complain about, I swear, but like, it, it, they just sit and like, it's like a wooden chair, but like the backing and like the cushion part of it's all purple. And I'm just like, how does, you know, there's entire people whose job it is on a movie to make sure that there's no continuity errors, to make sure they're like, you know, like Russell Crowe and Gladiator doesn't have like a watch on, you know, there's all this stuff like that. And I'm just like, how is someone looking at all this purple and go, okay, can we just change the, just get some red on them i don't know what it is um it was on offer (laughs) as he already sits down he gives my uh, like a huge info dump on the history of the three sacred treasures and my calls bullshit on all of it (laughs) Um, and Iori then waves off the poss- the impossibility of condensing magical martial arts energy waves into earpieces by saying that Chizuru's dad was able to condense magical martial arts energy waves into earpieces. And there's going to be no more questions about this for the rest of the movie. <laughs> Just, just, it's done. It, don't worry about it, everyone. This is, at least he gives an explanation, though. I do appreciate that. Like, as, as bad as the science here is, at least he, you know, he gives some clue into why this is happening. But it's like, it's different than like Mortal Kombat, the movie, where they go, oh, it's mystical forces and that's it. But when you try to marry, like, technology with mystical forces then i don't know about you but you kind of lose me a bit i I just shout bullshit as well yeah this is one of the highlights for me because they explain like oh yeah by the way (laughs) pretty like exposition like the backstory of king of fighters which is largely irrelevant most of the time but at least gives some Mm. motivation and goes all right well there's the last this clan and there's the mirrors and artifacts and then my immediately goes sounds like bullshit Oh, yeah, by the way, here's these things where you press a button, you go inside a video game. Oh, okay. <laughs> <laughs> that makes sense to her. Which is I mean, fine. All... Yeah, I was yeah. going to say, you did interrupt. That would be fine if it was like a ha ha ha, it's a bit of a no in joke because we know that's actually what happens in the King of Fighters game, whatever. If it wasn't the basis for the entire rest of the plot. <laughs> um, Mr. Big then appears one more time, sadly. Uh, what happens to Mr. Big here at the doorman? Oh, I don't know, but it looks amazing, doesn't it? He was, he was shot by the gun from Hot Shots Part De, apparently. <laughs> he explodes in front of a door, and you see all the viscera. Everyone a sea of purple. expects viscera. Yes, yeah, sea of purple. Um, and and that's we we cut back to the uh, cultural museum event. 
And uh, Chizuru looks worried uh, for a moment before someone hits Rugal Bernstein's generic theme music. And he makes a, makes a run in into the ring. Um, this is straight out of like 2000s WCW here. <laughs> they just play his music. He walks in. He's all dressed in black. Everyone's just watched him. He doesn't really do much. And Rugal Bernstein is played in inverted commas by Ray Park, um, who's the only actor I can think of that's been a Star Wars villain, a comic book villain, and a video game villain. I'm sure there's a whole list of B-movie actors to say, yeah, no, that's first, but yeah, you know what, who cares? Yes, it is definitely him. A chugging new metal riff can only mean a brand new mid-carder with bad tattoos has shown up on Monday Night Raw. <laughs> oh, it's time for Rugal. And sadly, he doesn't even <laughs> just jump in and just shout, understand the concept of love, like the 95 theme. <laughs> uh, he just shows up to interrupt the thrilling discussion about, oh, well, you know, the Orakai is really powerful. And if you get the Orakai, you're really strong. It promises <laughs> unlimited power for anyone who wants it. Because that's kind of what happens in 97. Uh, the right. Kusanagi sword is here. That's the only thing to defeat the Orakai. That happened in King of Fighters 97. Blah, 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 blah. And then Rugal's like, all right, I've had enough. <laughs> just starts, just starts, blah, blah, just starts shooting everybody all of a sudden. Um, and then there's like a huge brawl to the back, essentially, right here. <laughs> Chizuru, Chizuru takes like this massive bump. It's unclear what actually happens to her. I think Rugal like shoots her or he uses the sword, but she just starts bleeding. She starts like, I, I don't know really. Did you see what happened to her? Cause I tried to look back through it and I was like, wait, when did she get hit? Cause there's one scene she's like, eh, she's fine. And then now she's bleh, she's bleeding on the floor. <laughs> Kevin Dunn missed that shot. <laughs> Cut to a kid in the crowd on his phone. Uh, <laughs> I'll say this. At least, you know, when you say Rugal, anyone who's played SNK game goes, oh, God, it's like it's like the baddest boss ever. It's like yeah. the, the ultimate mega, mega. It's like, um, like Patrice O'Neill's speech about Steven Seagal in the films where there's a speech where I'm like, oh, my God, he's the dude who trains the dudes, who trains the dudes. He's like the ultimate <laughs> badass ever. So you can't really have this guy who in the games, he's like this Bond villain and also the Bond villain's henchman rolled into mm -hmm. one. And as the Rapugan and the Kaiser wave and the genocide cutter. And that's all well and good for a video game. And this is why reality sucks, Magma Muscles, because it's like, well, what have mm -hmm. we got? Ray Park with two different eye colors. <laughs> we can do the arms dealer aspect of that. That's easy. Guns are cheap in Boston. Okay. Ray Park, very uh, talented, like martial artist, you know, fighter, stunt man and stuff. Not an actor. There's a reason why he had like five lines in X-Men as Toad. And think about that. You have the actor that's playing a version of Toad from Marvel Comics and you're not changing him all that much. And then he's also playing Rugal Bernstein, like a six foot five mountain of a man with golden blonde hair and a beard wearing a red suit and has a pet panther. <laughs> and it's just this, you know, average looking dude with two eye colors. And then they called it a day. Like, that's good. You know, like, again, he could probably have played some other role in this. Certainly, I, I off the top of my head, I don't know who, but like you're saying, he's gonna play Rugal. Like maybe if they dyed, if maybe if they dyed his hair to look like Cody Rhodes, then he, he maybe he could have played Geese, maybe, but not Rugal though. Yeah, but again, ten million Canadian dollars. <laughs> That's like almost any time I'm or you're going to have a problem. We're just going to say 10 million Canadian dollars. Um, yeah. So, so Chizuru is just selling on, on the ground. <laughs> and she's Seven. worried. She's worried that Rugal is going to steal all the treasures. But Iori and Mai assure her that that won't happen. Cut to Rugal stealing all the treasures in front of everybody. <laughs> like, Iori literally is like, don't worry about Rugal. He turns and Rugal's throwing all the treasures under his jacket. <laughs> it's like this giant mirror. 
Um, it's like Guybrush Threepwood's gonna... pocket. He just shoves them all in. <laughs> he's just he's just like Link. It just everything fits into his like little bag. Um, Iori gives chase and Rugal knocks him out. Uh, Rugal runs into an empty room. He spits his own blood on all to the treasures, which sends him into mainframe so he can fight Megabyte for the King of Fighters crown. <laughs> it's like Shizuru then has fortunately enough um, like pro tag juice that she can just dump more info, even though she's <laughs> dying on a gurney. Um, okay, look, right I don't, in the exposition muscle. <laughs> I, I don't want to be mean to this woman, but wooden planks are jealous of, of her acting. Um, she explains that Rugal is now is now going to be running roughshod over the KOF Federation. He's going to start killing off contestants. And Mai, since she doesn't understand anything, she doesn't understand anything. She's still like, this is bullshit. Even though she's been in it. She's been in it. Okay. What do you do normally when you have some like crazy premise, right? You have you have a fish out of water story. Like, let's say she gets an invite for the first time to the KOF tournament and she shows up and she's like, where is it? And the, where's the tournament at? And they give her an earpiece. But the movie foregoes that. Mai is, I guess, the main character, but Keo, who we haven't even met yet, is also kind of the main character, but he's not introduced until like 45% into the film. But it would just ease everyone better if you focused on either Mai or Keo and say, okay, this is them learning the ropes of the tournament. And it's just, it's all mixed up. And like essential movie making, like not not to say like all the stuff about it being not accurate to the games isn't important, but just essential movie making for randos that don't even know anything about KOF, just, just focus on one character and let them be the allegory for the viewer so that they can understand what the fuck this world is. Cause Mai's in the tournament. She's in the stupid video game reboot shit. And, but she's still claiming it's bullshit. <laughs> Yeah, it's like it's filmed out of sync almost. Uh, mm. What's that rule I remember reading? Like, you get, if you're doing anything, a comic, a TV, a film, you get the audience to swallow one lie early on, and if they get right. them to believe that, then they'll believe anything else that happens in the rest of the film. They've established the, thi- the thing with the earpiece, and they've done the, oh, that's that dude, that's, that's Mr. Big, I guess, for reasons for copyright, <laughs> I guess. That's Mr. Big, we played earlier, we get it. So it's like, all right, fine. Actually, I'll give them compliments. That's a nice way of setting that up. And then they go, all right, well, now Rugal's going to jump in the thing with the sword and the blah, blah, blah. And it looks like in Super Mario Brothers, the movie, where they'd go to the dinosaur land with the big orange swirly thing, and then he's going to kill everybody, and then you have to stop him with the sword that the Kusanagi's invented, and that <laughs> Keo Kusanagi. And then Mai goes, what's King of Fighters? <laughs> It, it and and she's not the only character that does this because we have to do that with a whole new character as well. It's still like, what is this? I don't understand video games. Um, all Mai is re- really knows is that she needs to find one Saisu Kusanagi, patriarch of the Kusanagi clan, for more info. And unfortunately, when she, I guess, drives to Seattle. Uh, she is remiss to find that uh, Saisu is in a vegetative state. And this is where we are now sadly introduced to his Muppet of a son, Keo, inexplicably played by Sean Ferris. Do you do you have anything on Sean Ferris? All right. Well, first of all, I've said, all right, so Nearly Dead Chizuru says, you have to find Saisu Kusanagi. And she, she should have looked at the camera gone, you know, from King of Fighters 95. <laughs> um, and then, she, you know, she gets there. We get the genuine highlight of the film for me when uh, she checks her phone and Terry Bogart's message her. <laughs> Where are you? Are you okay? <laughs> that, okay. Yeah. I did, I did always appreciate that because, but it's like weird. It's like you did that, but you couldn't have put Southtown somewhere. Or you couldn't have like made the costumes a bit more authentic to the show, but like, you know, yeah, let, let have Are You Okay there. Sometimes I think that was actually a mistake. Like, not a mistake. That just happened to be coincidence. Do you think that's coincidence <laughs> that he said, Are You Okay? Because it's a very generic thing to say, but I almost don't want to give them that amount of credit. 
<laughs> well, you're mean. Uh, <laughs> yeah, I'll I'll give them the credit. Look, it's nice. Um, Fair enough. But it turns out, it turns out Se- Seisu hasn't said or done anything in ten years. He's laid dormant. <laughs> hey, we call him the last blade, Kusanagi, around these parts. <laughs> <laughs> and then, yes, you, you put it well. Uh, my bumps into Seisu's uh, big son, Ayuga Sanagi, <laughs> who doesn't know what's happening. So my falls asleep while we get flashback footage of the two of them practicing in case the audience doesn't realize they're related. Why do you think they have to show this footage to let the audience know that? They, they may not get that they're related. Yeah, because... You know, he, they, they, this flashback is him training with his father. And lots have changed. Lots of things have changed since then. Most notably, Keo's ethnicity. Because <laughs> apparently when he was a kid, he was Asian. <laughs> but when he grows up, I guess he grows out of that? I This, this, this <laughs> is just so weird to me. If you're going... So they say... You see later they go they go back to to Keo's house or whatever. This is this is a bit later in the film. There's a fucking photo of him, his dad Saisu, and his mom. His mom is clearly like Caucasian or you know definitely around there. But there's a picture of Keo as a baby, and he he's he's an Asian baby. <laughs> Why not just hire an Asian actor to play Keo? Sean Ferris is 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 not it. Like he, it's just so weird to me why they do this. But Iori has a line where he says, "Kyo's not a full Kusanagi. He's a hybrid." <laughs> oh, I didn't get that. <laughs> he says it. He says he's a hybrid or like a half breed. No, he says half breed. And I was like, "What the fuck? This isn't Dragon Ball Z." Oh, he's a mud blood. <laughs> I'm like, why, why, why? Because, okay, me, uh, Sean Ferris, I looked him up. He played Gunner Number Two in Pearl Harbor, and then he was he was in a single episode about in about every major network American drama in the 2000s, and that's it. But he did play the main character in Need for Speed: The Run. Which is that one Need for Speed game where you got out of your car a lot and you did like GTA shit? That's all oh. I could find. So why was this guy so important? He's clearly not a stunt actor. Like, doesn't really know martial arts. Anytime you see him do shit, it's like it cuts to like a stunt double or he's doing other stuff or he's just it's just wide shots. Sorry, it's just like close shots so you see his face. He doesn't even fight all that much, and he's he's a bad actor. He's he's the room levels. He's Denny levels in in terms of like just how he reacts to anything. Most of the time he says nothing and just turns and just walks away. So it's very, very weird to me, this whole thing. Like they didn't know how to handle this. Like it's it's a complex sort of thing. Like if you're going to show what he looks like as a kid, don't. Don't show an Asian child because it just makes it more confusing. I don't understand. What, what Do you have anything on this specifically about his changing ethnicity? Uh, I would love to say it's a knowing reference to when Birdie changed ethnicities in Street Fighter. Uh, but who are we kidding? Um, it's to make up for the Mr. Big thing, all right? Leave him alone. They're trying their best. Ten million Canadian dollars. Uh, I'm not going to say yeah that's a 10 million Canadian dollars I'm not going to say anything because you said way more than enough uh, okay. because because Sean Farris's opening paragraph in Wikipedia mentions this film so there's a good chance he'll watch this video because <laughs> <laughs> what else is he doing I'm sorry, Mr. Sean Ferris, if you listen to this, but um, you you touched on this before. After my meets with Sean Ferris, and he just tells her, "I don't understand King of Fighters lore," she just falls asleep in her car <laughs> all night. <laughs> And I'm like, I've never seen this. This is innovative. This is the future of filmmaking. Just have characters fall asleep in their cars overnight. <laughs> like, why? Why can she go back to a hotel? Like, anything. I know she, like, got to Seattle, but it's so weird. Because all this really does 
is she bumps back into Iori, and Iori's like, where the fuck were you? After that guy attacked everyone with guns, you just left. Because <laughs> Chizuru warned her, don't, don't involve Iori in any way whatsoever. It's too dangerous. And then Mai decides to involve Iori by telling him everything. <laughs> so she goes as goes to sleep because presumably it's a long distance from Boston to Seattle. <laughs> yeah. And she's like, well, my father, he's not going to notice. He's comatose. Um, and then, yeah, uh, after we told the entire plot, uh, <laughs> next day, Yagami shows up and says, hey, what's up? Better say my name in front of the family that's been feuding with me for centuries. <laughs> So Saisu freaks the fuck out and tries yeah. to attack Ayori. And his last words are, my son, in case Which we you- still don't get it. <laughs> <laughs> and that's the bit that's so badly ADR'd because they do it just as Kyo's like hand or whatever is in front of his mouth so you can't see it. And then he's like, my son. <laughs> Honest, my son. Believe me. I know it makes no sense, um, but yeah, it's 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 okay. So Yori just somehow meets. Uh, it's unclear where she meets Yori in Seattle, or she goes back to Boston, then meets Yori, and then they drive back to Seattle. They drive. Okay, maybe they don't drive, <laughs> but they don't show like a passage of time montage where they're like on a plane. They're just in a car. And by movie movie logic, I assume that mean that means they drove. Unless you show me a plane, I assume you drove because you're in a car. Th- that's that's how my brain works. So yeah, maybe she like, sorry, see, maybe uh, she messed with him. Maybe she like drove the forty five hours from Boston to Seattle. Get that? He's like he's fucking comatose. All right, fuck. <laughs> I already you need to come straight away. He needs to see you. He's really urgent. He's, he can't stop talking about you. <laughs> And she goes to sleep in the car and thinks, ah. <laughs> it's, it's, this entire bit is so bizarre. Um, you know, the, the, we cut to then Shizuru in her hospital bed directing traffic. And some nerd is just logging on to the oh. King of Fighters website. And he's trying to slide into the DMs of the various fighters to warn them about oh. Rugal. Hang on, he's not a voice and, actor. Come on. He's not, but like... Even though he says he warned them about Rugal, he goes, Rugal's overridden the program or some shit. And he, like, he confirms that Rugal is booking himself to win every match on the card. <laughs> because because he went, he did, like, the blood ritual with the three sacred treasures that gets him into the Digiverse, and he just lives there. It seems like that's where he is. Like, Rugal's body isn't in the real world, and he's just constantly in, in KOF fight world. And I'm just like, okay, no, 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 no. This is where the whole marriage of technology and mysticism, like, breaks down. It's like, no, can you survive in this world? What are you eating? What are you doing? Are you dig- Are you lawnmower man? Are you digital information? What's happening here? Yeah, what's happening? Is he is he Ray Park? Is he Theme Park? What what's happening? How is he able to do this thing? Is it not like a digital simulation? They're actually going to die. Yes, they'll actually die if they go in there. It's like a million different anime that all my friends watched and all shit. <laughs> and there's lots of scenes where people are sitting down trying to explain. And like how this works, but they don't actually ever explain it. They just kind of vaguely say like, oh yeah, you know, the sacred treasures and blah, 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 blah. And oh, this is bullshit. That makes no sense. Like, yeah, sure it doesn't. But it, um, Rugal books himself that he's going to be start, he's going to face Vice and Mature, who we then cut to and they look like they're in the middle of filming an amateur girl on girl video. But like, I didn't. Okay, I misspoke when I said look like because they are. They are filming an amateur girl girl video, which I guess is slightly maybe alluded to in the games, but I never really got that. I got that vice and mature were like just two partners that will hook up with any bad guy. Usually Iori, which they don't in this. What do you have on vice and mature? Uh, well. 
in the games, it's pretty much one of those, like, you know, the video games go along and they change their minds, so it's weird. At one point, they're Rugal secretaries, and then it's like, yep. surprise, actually, Gonitz ordered them to, to stay Go on them. Blah, blah, blah. Uh, and uh, and all this, and it's like, okay, you know what? That's not great writing. I'm glad they didn't put that in this. But <laughs> they clearly did this because they're like, look, we need something to entice people to watch this when we upload yeah. the trailer. How about a bit of lezzers? <laughs> and uh, and I'm, don't get me wrong, that's probably going to get some people going, but it's just, no, there's nothing in the game that suggests this. As you said, I'm sure there's people have gone, there's some little interactions or whatever, you know. I'm sure someone has nothing. written yeah, like right, a right. lemon fan fiction or something. Oh, there you go. See, I was wondering if I was going to be the worst person to say lemon, but then you said <laughs> it, so thank you very much, mate. Um, but then we get, yeah, it's... These women are so fucking horny for one another. They're, they've just done some, you know, your mum's yoga session. They're in the locker room still. <laughs> yeah, yeah. They're like, fuck it, let's just do it here. I mean, that is that is crazy levels. A, a bunch Good of other God. women just walk out of the scene. They're maybe off camera for about three and a half seconds where they go, we're finally alone. Just go to your house. Yeah, Wow. There's probably that, cameras in here. I don't know. I mean, yoga can have that effect. You know, you get a good stretch and you're like, all right. Yoga, yoga pants, you know, invented by one of the greatest heroes <laughs> of our generation. Um, you know, they're, they're, they're busy doing their thing. And Rugal interrupts them by challenging them oh, both. For, and, uh, um, whereupon <laughs> we get transported to the set of Skate or Die and Rugal wait, is wait, wearing, no, no, no! I've got what? to interrupt. I've got to interrupt because yeah, obviously this is an amazing bit. But before yeah. that, after we've just had uh, Newman from Jurassic Park reiterate, "Oh my God, Rugal will kill the people if they go into King of Fighters," and then she says, "Rugal, we better tell them all." These two horny individuals go, <laughs> "We were told not to do that. It'd be bad." Yeah. What the hell? Let's do it anyway. That they're rebels. They do what they want. Yeah. Oh, you know what? Yeah. Let's just ignore them. I'm like, all right, well, you deserve to die now. So there's no sympathy. It's like the teenagers in the horror films with Freddy Krueger or whatever. It's like, all right, I hope you die. I, I can understand <laughs> And then what happens? You... Oh, sorry, go ahead, Matt. I was, I was going to say, I can understand if you have these characters that have been in the movie for at least a couple of minutes like more than the one like 30 seconds that these characters have already shown up for where you establish that they don't play by the rules and they're like whatever you know devil may care attitude but no like they're just they're about to kiss each other and then it's like yeah let's just do let's just do it who cares i mean you're dealing with weird digiverse and uh you know a tournament inside another dimension you want to be a little bit cautious yeah but yeah, they they just do their thing, like you said, and they're like, yeah, let's just let's just do it anyway. Why why does Rugal then fight them while being a goalie from hockey? Why do you have do you have any reason for this? Why? <laughs> when you asked me uh, a few days ago, hey, do you want to watch King yes. of Fighters and talk about it? I went great. From ten years since I last watched it. <laughs> the thing I remembered most, the rest is very forgettable unless you analyze it like we're doing about driving from Boston to Seattle. But the thing that stuck out the most was this scene where <laughs> Brugal, the baddest bad dude in all of video gaming in 94, is shown to be the baddest bad dude in gaming, in all of fighting. With Ray Park showing up, <laughs> wearing hockey gear, <laughs> Coming down a skate ramp on blades <laughs> while shouting in his, I'm from Glasgow, but for some reason I'm going to hide my accent to uh, parts unknown, yelling, <laughs> I'm the king of fighters, Rugal! Mwah! <laughs> Chef's yeah. kiss. Do we need another Obvious. take? No, no, it's perfect, perfect. That's the one. Are you sure, are you sure we shouldn't have a scene where martial arts are going at it and... Half the audience are going to go, fuck it, I could do that. <laughs> uh, I feel like almost they're like, oh, we can't have too many martial arts scenes. People get bored. <laughs> so let's so let's so let's let's have like a hockey scene. Unless Rugal thinks he's on the USA sports team from 94. And he because <gasps> oh. then he does baseball later. 
That's Maybe right. That's it's a thinking. subtle reference. You're so smart, Matt. There's no basketball, though. Wait, no. Oh. The U.S. sports team was basketball, like football, and then what was the other one? What does Heavy D do? Boxing? I think so, yeah. I don't know. I, it just looked so, cool. Yeah, it just looked cool, but like, yeah, the, none of his sports line up with that, but... You know, if you had any remaining doubts that the first draft of this script was like a generic no-name martial arts dark comedy that they then <laughs> later got the King of Fighters license attached to, like this is the part where that breaks down because this is where I really feel it's like, yeah, they were going for something else. And then, yeah, we, oh, we can get a, a cool license. Cool. Slap that on. Change everyone's names. Like everything that happens during this weird rollerblade uh, running man fight is just so weird and uh, like it is all all the other fights kind of like okay I can see that being a king of fighters but this is just this, uh, so out of nowhere like someone else directed the scene of Rugal fighting Vice and Mature for about like three seconds and you know Vice and Mature do some c- good lucha things. Uh, hey. Rugal, <laughs> Rugal changes his costume, and he sucks out his, sucks out one of their souls, a la Shang Tsung. And then uh, Rugal blackmails Vice to be his new community manager, who then pushes his. Okay, her line is Rugal has improved the gameplay <laughs> to try to facilitate more matches from other King of. And this is where you can. Who are some names that she flies through oh, just, from King of Fighters so you can get them in there? Uh, all of them. <laughs> Was there anybody fucking left? What are you talking about? <laughs> I saw, like, Ramon. I saw a dual uh, Ramon! Sorry. <laughs> hey, Chico. You know, like... <laughs> I, th- okay, this is good because we can get, we can get people... KOF fans to be like, hey, look, those are names I recognize. But you don't have to cast anybody. You don't need to pay anybody for like saying these names. Really, it's like it's like those early Marvel movies where they're going through like a list of databases and X Men movies, and they have like Wolf Spain and Black <laughs> yes. Tom Cassidy, and you're like, yeah, and you can point at the screen for one second. So it's really really easy to do. So I don't begrudge them this bit, but it still like sucks to not have like a lineup like you know you could do like let's say there's going to be a traditional tournament and you could have a quick panning shot of a bunch of extras dressed up as king of fighters characters uh the ones that aren't like main like main baby faces so that's fine you could do that and i'll be like but this is just even lazier just seeing their names in a phone yeah it's and it's so like hey shingo yabuki come over and fight benimaru no it's completely (laughs) safe you know, it's it's a space of that. Hey, uh, the bad guy from Metal Slug, why don't you come <laughs> over and fight uh, uh, Gonitz? Dur, 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 dur. It's just like, okay, am I supposed to be going, if I'm at the cinema watching this with um, myself and a fellow insomniac, and we're supposed to be going, yay, that we put our arms in the air and go, I know who that is. Uh, you're right, yes. Before we get this lovely, mon- I guess we can call it a montage, because yeah. what the fuck else are you going to call it? Um uh, Rugal commentates himself fighting before fall, before falling over while he tries to figure out where his accent is supposed to be from. <laughs> uh, he should have gone with Rugal being from from Glasgow and just showing I'm the king of square go. Uh, instead, he tries to act and act around himself. So it's so scary. He should have been Jurassic Park. <laughs> And you, yes. how, many, how many jokes do you have with Ray Park's name? There's a few more coming up. Okay, uh, Vice great. then has to work with Mature, and she rings a bunch of characters who aren't in the film uh, and to say, you know, ignore what the boss said, just do what I said. You know, uh, <laughs> don't know how this will help Rugal get his sword, but she's strapped to a chair, and then Rugal does something to her that's so horrible the camera pans away. <laughs> Maybe she had to pay full price. The King of Fighters 12. <laughs> Very nice. Um, we then we then cut from that um, to CIA Special <laughs> Agent Terry Bogard. <laughs> now, when I watched this originally, um, like, 
I had no idea who this guy was supposed to be playing. I just assumed Terry or what, whatever Bogart wasn't even in it because they don't name him for a long, long time until this scene. And I thought him and his crew were just like generic agents that had no, like, no real connection to King of Fighters. But no, Terry Bogart, Terry fucking Bogart is a straight laced by the book company man that works for the CIA. That's as stupid as making Chun Li like a news reporter or like DJ a computer <laughs> whiz. It's very, very silly. <laughs> Terry Bogart for the CIA shows up to help Jizuru and says he's CIA a bunch of times. <laughs> Take a shot. There's two drinking games I have for this uh, this okay. film. Take a shot mm-hmm. every time Terry Bogard says he works for the CIA and every time someone lands on some boxes. Uh, there's no catchphrases or hat and I've put worst film sin so far. But as I'd like point out that the game series that helped inspire Smash Brothers, one of them got to be in Smash Brothers. Just want to say, hey, hey, come on, come on. That's very true. It's weird the connections you can make. We're good. we're not we're not done with this guy because um, that's a shame. Uh, <laughs> Terry is pl- he, okay. Just I'm not sure if you looked it up. Do you do you have any idea who this actor is? Is this playing Terry? Uh, no. Go on. Okay, dude. Like, get strap yourself fucking in <laughs> because what you're, like Rugal's chair? You're, sus- you're, yeah, your suspension of, of disbelief is about to take a fucking beating. <laughs> um, he is played by one David Leach, and um, he sucks. He would go on to do some serious shit. Like he he is billed originally as a stunt man. He doubled as Brad Pitt in five different films and a Jean-Claude Van Damme in two different films. And he did a lot of minor roles like this up until King of Fighters. And then he wound up co-directing John Wick, the first John Wick, with his partner. He then directed Atomic Blonde, which is... An amazing, super underrated movie. Go see Atomic Blonde. Before then moving on as the director of Deadpool 2. And then moved on as the director of Hobbs and Shaw. Or as it's known in Japan, Wild Speed Super Combo. (laughs) He's currently in post-production on his new film, Bullet Train, which is a movie that takes place entirely on a Japanese bullet train with five different assassins on said train fighting it out. That's the movie. It's starring Brad Pitt, Zazie Beetz, who played Domino in Deadpool 2, and also stars Lady Gaga. (laughs) Show of hands, who thought that this guy who shittily plays CIA agent Terry Bogard would do this. It is the most unbelievable story I've ever, when I finally made this connection, like two years ago, I'm like, that fucking guy that played Terry in King of Fighters would go on to be like the superstar action director. And like, he played Brad Pitt in five different movies, his stunt double, and now is the guy directing Brad Pitt in some fucking bananas Japanese bullet train movie. I love the world. When this type of shit happens, I'm like, oh, it's so good. It's so good. Wow, his career choice is better written than anything in this film. That's amazing. What a turn of events. Thank you very much for educating me on that. Those are some of the films I've seen of his have been amazing. So I should probably watch Atomic Blonde at some point. Yeah, no, Tom Bond's very good. It's just like, it's like really actually subtle, like James Bond with like a female lead. And it's just, it's it's like a very European type movie where it's like, yeah, you know, pay attention. There's a lot of information being like put out to you. There's action scenes for for like for sure. Like really nice action scenes that are shot very well. But it's the type of thing you need to pay attention. Like it's not like for, you know, anyone that wants action. It's, it's, it's the opposite of Michael Bay. You know that type mm. of thing, but um, yeah, what a what a career this dude already has, and like I'm very happy that at least someone from this movie will go on to do some some awesome things. Um, That's awesome. So, so you said in Atomic Blonde, there's lots of scenes where there's people talking about plot and explanation, like yes. Shizuru explaining the plot about the dimensions <laughs> and the King of Fighters and the fighting and the glaive. And, and, 
Terry refuses to believe the impossible. <laughs> he's just he's just like, no, I don't understand. I don't believe it. But like, dude, there's a tournament going on somewhere, but you haven't seen any of it. So why not just fucking say, screw it. All right, I'll believe you. But no, we have to have a third character. A third one now that says, this is bullshit. I hate it. I don't understand it. Everyone shut up. But he's the CIA agent, so I kind of give him some slack. But it doesn't, like, excuse both Mai and Keo from also saying this is all this is all bullcrap. Like, it gets so tiring hearing everyone say, like, I don't believe this. This, is, this, is, this makes no sense to me. But uh, yeah, I, I guess it's, they felt it's they needed It's almost like, oh, sorry, go on. No, sorry. I was just because I guess they felt they needed like a third person to also say this stuff. Yeah, uh, I think they realised well, it's a bit of a small cast here. Let's have <laughs> someone else, and he doesn't agree with it. Uh, in one of your earlier lives, there was a series called RoboCop Stupidity, and one of the lines <laughs> of the Murphy's love interest uh, yells at the police officer when she tells her something. She yells, "That's a load of red cabbage." <laughs> and I feel that's what Terry Pogue was trying to get across with this scene. That's a load of red cabbage, and you know it. <laughs> oh, my God. What a pull. I don't think anyone's pulled as pulled as you have pulled. Oh, thank you. Wow. Uh, I have that reputation. Uh, <laughs> she's always then say, saying that she doesn't want her King of Fighters people marching up and down the streets like Nazi stormtroop. Okay, for this. <laughs> That's, that shocked me back in the day that some like kids cartoon based on an 80s R-rated franchise would just name drop Nazi stormtroopers. It's just it's incredible, that robot. That robot. That uh, Robocop <laughs> cartoon. Um, that, that wacky robot. <laughs> <laughs> that wacky robot, Alex Murphy. Anyway, all the baby faces that meet up in Seattle uh, and everyone wants to like everyone wants to rally against Rugal. So um, we're just going to cut. And Iori then tells Kyo, you know, at least something that's accurate to the games and that they are destined to be enemies, which I kind of like. Yeah, at least it's kind of accurate, but uh, for this opening bit, I'll put nothing happens for the next few scenes, but we check out Kyo's bitching bike. (laughs) Uh, Also, the garage monkey dude going, oh, hey, a pretty lady. Hey, baby. (laughs) Hey, just because there's snow on the roof doesn't mean there's fire in the furnace. (laughs) I do like that Keo does have uh, like a predilection for um, motorcycles in the games, especially the later ones. So if this was a subtle nod to that, I kind of like it. Um, but other than that, like you know, Mai just pleads Keo to like help. Like, hey, you're you're a part of this. But Sean Ferris does what he does best here, which is to say nothing and then just kind of walk away out of a scene, which he does quite a lot. Um, and, and she talks to him more in his house. They bond a little bit. Uh, both actors tried to out wooden act each other. Um, and then they, they, they have like a little scuffle. She's like, Oh, whoops. Sorry. He just puts his hand on her shoulder cause she's walking away and she just does this fucking, she just puts him into a cross arm breaker all of a sudden. She's like, Oh Jesus. Sorry. It's just my killer instincts. I guess ultra combo. <laughs> It's just, again, I don't know why that scene was even there because it didn't really matter to the overall plot. And it just cuts. And then they, they're meeting Iori at the hotel again. The the hotel, I don't know if this is in Seattle anymore <laughs> or they drove the 45 hours back to Boston. Usually in scenes like this, what do you have? You're watching a James Bond movie, you're watching a whatever. You have a little bit of text that says what the fuck state or country you're in. That helps so much. It's such a small thing, but that, but then they think if we tell people where we are, that's going to make no sense because we don't have stock footage of a airplane or a car ride or whatever it is. You know, if they're going to do this dimensional hopping thing, why not just say, oh, we can hop to different places. We can, like, teleport. Why not? Yeah, I think they got sick of going from the complete opposite ends of America and went, fuck <laughs> it, we'll just meet in North Dakota, all right? <laughs> uh, but um, yes, uh, I, I've put, Kyo wants to know answers because he doesn't know what's going on. 
This makes him relatable to the audience. <laughs> Mai dislocates his shoulder and then explains the King of Fighters was responsible for his dad's coma. Also, <laughs> Rugal at the same time. Not quite explained very well. It must have been a handicap match. Uh, then they go into a hotel with Terry Bogard, but the wacky team of Kusanagi and Yagami just can't get along. Somewhere, Vince Russo is rubbing one off and telling Vince McMahon to put the tag belts on them. I I have um, uh, Iori and my uh, sorry uh, Keo and my show up. Uh, Iori's having none of it, but then just then Terry Bogart appears and he is also having none of it, and he's just like, "No, it's all bullshit." <laughs> Everyone reconvene at our hotel base. So they go up to their suite, and Mai also reveals she's she's a secret agent that's been working for Terry, unbeknownst to Iori, who then gets into a big huff about it and decides he can take on Rugal, despite the fact that Rugal beat his ass earlier in the film. I just... Why Mai being a secret agent? Again, it doesn't really add much other than to have some type of plot point like, oh, Mai's been working with the CIA all along, but it, it, it doesn't matter. It does make sense that that's why she was all like, it's bullshit, but you were also using the KOF earpiece to go in. So it, 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 the, the movie gets very messy plot wise. I find here, like the start, I'm not going to say it's not messy, but it's around here where I'm just like, oh, okay, what are you doing here? Like, you just feel like you need to put some sort of uh, plot revelation, but it doesn't really matter. It's not like someone saying, I'm your father or I'm your daughter or, or you know, whatever. So <laughs> I don't get its purpose. What is its purpose? Do you have anything on this? I think they, uh, at some point, they try to put too much King of Fighters stuff in it and also <laughs> not enough at the same time. So we get drips. It's a, it's a buffet. <laughs> it's a buffet, but you only go once up to fill the plate of uh, King of Fighters related plots. And I think they looked at this and went, well, we've got Kyo and Hiroyu now. Um, we don't really need Mai anymore. Uh-oh, we better have something for her to do or she'll kick off. If she yeah. leaves, the, <laughs> you know, the investors, all 19 of them, they're all going to leave. <laughs> <laughs> all um, the associations yeah we'll be down to three production companies and then what we'll have to <laughs> film in Colorado uh, so I think that's why they do that you're right it just make it literally makes no sense where she goes alright I'm on assignment for the silly dimension yes that's right uh, I work for the CIA goes alright well I've been in the secret dimension I'll show you no I don't believe you you're off the case <laughs> <laughs> so uh <laughs> Uh, Yori goes into the, the fight dimension to fight Rugal, who's now dressed like an extra from Peaky Blinders, and shows oh. off his incredible new powers that he's obtained, which is do it, doing, like, David Copperfield shit and just shooting stuff out of his, like, his coat? I don't know what that is. He's the Black Scorpion. <laughs> Sting. <laughs> that, that day in South Town in 94. <laughs> <laughs> Do you remember Sting? Um, but, you know, instead of of Iori facing Rugal like proper, this this movie isn't about Rugal. It's about Kyo or maybe Mai. The movie is not sure. One of them. And Iori then only gets to fight Vice and Mature in like the best wire foo that, that they can. But I guess since it's, like you said, a handicap match, uh, Iori just then... I guess he decides to get possessed by the Orochi. What is the deal with the Orochi demon? It seems to be a force that's just hanging around. And I don't, cause we saw it earlier when my fought, uh, Mr. Mr. Big, it, it was hanging around and then just no one talks about it. It shows up whenever it's convenient for the plot. It seems. Yeah. The, uh, Arakai thing is only manifest itself in people of, We've got an ancestry in the bloodlines. Yeah. Uh, in the case of uh, Leona, because she's a bit of a dull character without it. Um, right. But with Iori, it's, you know, it's because of you know, the whole legacy that we've been going on about with the uh, Yagamis, and, and we'll go into it later on. So it makes sense. Uh, it actually shows up. It's like, as you said, the Medusa head from Castlevania. <laughs> um, and 
it's like, oh, well, that doesn't make any sense, but okay. I have no idea why it's in the opening scene. And I'm not sure they knew what it was. Like, it's a power-up. Oh, boy, yeah. you're Rocky. It's like getting the, the three-shot in Contra. Fantastic. I'm going to win this fight now. Uh, yeah. And then we finally establish here, like, what they're doing with Ray Park. Because uh, you start off being a bit like Ulysses Claw, where he's, like, he's an arms dealer and he wants the thing for the money. Yeah, and the Yeah, yeah. But now he's in King of Fighters land. He can change his outfit. He can do magic tricks. He can pe- have people do stuff. He's Freddy Krueger. That's what they're going for. We've established that. It's a very bit, cheap Freddy Krueger. Right? And it's like, okay, that's all fine. You're bringing people into the King of Fighters dimension to fight them. That makes sense. It's called King of Fighters. And you mess with people and you're being a dick and all this. They haven't established the treasures bit that they start off with. Like, or was he supposed to be getting the sword to go in the mirror to become the Oraki? To then become even more but, powerful to take over the, the King of Fighters... Is- the sword is fake, apparently. Yeah, it's a fake sword, but he needs that to take over the King of Fighters that he's already taken over because he was able to hack in his amazing hacking abilities. So now he's able to kill people on command. Like I said, there's too much King of Fighters and not enough King of Fighters because they're, now they're overlapping. And you're like, well, all right. Now I'm just being a, I'm just being a doylem right now. Uh, that's what Park is doing. Uh, and right much. now he's dressed... He's dressed as the annoying guy at the anime convention who doesn't realise he's an annoying fuck. (laughs) In a cheap set with shop models with face masks, you can get 10 for 10 quid in most art jobs. (laughs) But he's fighting Rugal, right? He gets apparently possessed by by the Orochi demon, and Shizuru's been warning everyone for the entire movie, don't let this happen, but they all let it happen. And he's being like kind of dog dogpiled on by Vice Mature, and he clears the room with this massive fart, this massive energy wave, and it knocks Vice Mature aside. Uh, Ray Park then does his best Palpatine impression and tells uh, tells Iori to do it, and Iori then warps back to the real world, but he still like kind of got a whiff of the Orochi demon and, and everyone can see it in his eyes. His eyes just turn this weird milky white and, and Keo storms off cause he's, cause he's like this edgy teenager. And I guess my and Terry then just, they, they just chat about, um, her being a secret agent and they just kind of forget the whole scene. It's, it, it, it's just really weird at this point of the film that things just kind of happen and no one really talks about it. Like there's nothing, there's no real stakes here. It's like, Oh, uh, uh, Iori went to the, the fight dimension and fought the main bad guy of the film. And everyone's like, ah, that's fine. Let's continue on with our day. It's, it's so strange. This portion of the film. Cause up until now it's been kind of formulaic in a movie sense. But it's up here where, like, they didn't they didn't know what to do. Like you said, they wanted to put a lot of King of Fighters in, but they didn't want to put too much. But they put in a little. But then they're like, "Oh wait, how much should we put?" So it's it's all over the shop. You're right, and they need to have the uh, Orochi blood, uh, the the Riot of the Blood, as it's called in the game. Or yeah, if you've yeah. seen this, uh, if you bought this with real money, uh, Riot at the dollar <laughs> store. But. They need to have it because if they're going to change his outfit and the cool thing and he's in a band and he's sexy and he's misunderstood, then it's just <laughs> a dude who doesn't like Kyo. Uh, so I see why they're doing it and it makes some sense. And at least they've do the bit where um, I- Iori kills Mature and Vice at one point. That much of us still can or not because they obviously keep on turning up because it's a fighting game series. <laughs> right. So at least, okay, yeah, there's, there's something from the game. Let's take a shot. Uh, and I'm obviously curious as to why Oh, it's the who did this first, the evil version of characters. Because Oraki, Orokai's, uh, Aori's debut was in the ending to King of Fighters 96, released July 30th, 96. Evil Ryu <laughs> only showed up in the North American version of Street Fighter Alpha 2 in March mm. 96 of the same year. So it's pretty much neck and neck there. But I like the fact it's in the North American version, not the Japanese version. Did Capcom go, oh shit, we should have an evil version of one of our characters. That's awesome. Let's put the American one. <laughs> Uh, just Maybe. saying you know, there, there's something there for because the the timelines sync up so well like yeah 96 big year for evil fighting game characters <laughs> but, all um, the range like fatalities <laughs> iori like kind of goads 
Keo into then taking on Rugal. And I assume this is because he probably hopes at this point Keo will get killed by Rugal. It's it's unclear because Yori is like, yeah, no, we're destined to fight each other, I guess. But he, he, uh, Keo goes to the fighting dimension for the first time. He says, this is bullshit. Um, he fights Rugal for like a second, gets his ass handed to him. And Rugal lets Keo off with a strict warning. In yeah. the frozen time, Keo reappears and Mai then admonishes Yori for this. And in the greatest scene of his life, Will Will over here simply looks at the camera, looks to the side, and then just says nothing. And then we just cut. Like, she goes, you almost got him killed. And then Yori looks around and then doesn't say anything. Um, Mai then tries to speak to Keo, who does the whole... Like, I'm not good enough. I'm not a hero thing. And even though deep down, Mai knows that that's true and then he sucks and he's not a hero, the script says <laughs> she has to encourage him him, him anyway because he's now the hero of the story, not her, even though he spent like the first 50% of the movie with Mai being the hero. Yeah, it's like it's it's your granddad's sword or something that's going to yeah. stop Rugal becoming all-powerful, even though he already kind of is. Whoops. Anyway, well. Uh, also, a brief mention here. Iori's hair dye is gone now. Yeah. And I don't know if that's symbolic of him embracing the right of the blood or they just <laughs> forgot. I I think a little from column A and a little from column B, all in all honest, though. Um, uh, Terry and everyone, they, they meet up again and Shizuru... Chizuru, who is now fully recovered from the battle damage, uh, brings awkward uh, computer nerd along with her and explains that Rugal can now force people from one dimension to the other in order to fight them without even their say-so, just as Mai is then forced into the other dimension to fight him. And as soon as that happens... Chizuru should have looked at the camera and said, told you. (laughs) As soon as that happens, the rest of the baby faces then decide to go all in and they're all going to take out Rugal. But not Iori, though. Iori has to stay behind because it's too dangerous. And then for some reason, the King of Fighters dimension is now populated with like random NPCs. (laughs) Most of them, I guess that they're homeless. Was this ever explained why they're here? You know what? I wrote so little about the scenes that have just happened. I don't know where I am on my notes. Two seconds. All I've written is Terry Bogart talks about stuff in a fish container. Blah, blah, blah. Where are we? Uh, oh, yeah. We get an okay bit where uh, Ray Park kicks him in a door and he pops out the other one behind him like uh, like Scooby-Doo. Yeah, a little or, bit. Or All Elite Scooby-Doo. That might be a dated reference by the time this comes, by the time of recording, in fact. Uh, <laughs> and also Kyo's gear turned him in kind of his King of Fighters gear. But just yes, without a... the headband, it bothers me a lot without the headband. But I thought he was supposed to be wearing like basically his school clothes. He's got that JoJo's thing where he's, you know, he's just he's representing school or something because he's yeah, a kid. Yeah, but then Kyo changed his look in the games later and was more of like a biker. He just has a leather jacket on, which Kyo wears in the real world. But ah. I guess they thought in the KOF world he needs to be dressed like like the JoJo thing, like Keo used to do. But by the time this movie comes out, Keo has stopped wearing that altogether and is wearing more of the biker <laughs> gear. So I, you know, I, I don't think anyone knew what they were doing at all. He's maturing before our very eyes. Um, <laughs> He's growing instead up. Instead, he <laughs> and that little he... boy that nobody likes <laughs> grew up to be Keo Kusanagi. <laughs> Yeah, so Ray, Ray Park kicks him out the game so he can bring others to fight him, sends him into the abyss, so he's yep. Joseph Park. Pause for laughter, I've written here. <laughs> Terry Bogard reminds us he's CIA, which is great bad writing. Why are you here? I'm CIA. <laughs> How did you get to direct John Wick? I'm CIA. <laughs> uh, I, the, 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 homeless Jizu, people, oh, the homeless people are here, though, because I don't know if you agree with this, because they realize that there's too many good guys and there's not enough bad guys. Yeah. Who, who else are also they going to fight? 
Also, they're a lot cheaper than real actors. That's true. Um, apparently, we've missed out on a important, important bit of this. So, wait a minute. What you're telling me is that me and you are talking about a, vi- a video game adaptation where an evil dude is now merging the two realms together. <laughs> also, there's a lot of purple. That's a lot. Are we destined to do this forever? To I talk guess about so. Mortal Kombat Annihilation. So. Whether it be Rugal Bernstein or Shao Kahn, I, we have to do this dance forever, I guess. Until that, that new Mortal Kombat movie that comes out that hasn't had a trailer, even though the movie's been filmed f- and finished for like a year, mm. uh, I, I we might have to do that one as well. Just, I hope Shao Kahn's in that. I really do, but yeah. I, I don't think he is, unfortunately. He's, he's going to come off a skate ramp. He's going to have... <laughs> It's me, Shao Kahn! I'm the mortal of combat! <laughs> yeah. um, you know what? I've always wondered why they don't do... Because there's, there's all these feuds going on with SNK and Capcom and Midway mm-hmm. going on in the 90s, and they have little references like Dan and whatever. I'm surprised when they've done these adaptations for films... When they've had to have like a scrub get wrecked by one of the main characters, they've not done, dressed them up as like a parody of, you know, one of the other fighting game companies' mascots or something. Like, why like when not? you had Sagat re- wrecking, you know, Dan and everything and blah, 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 out of fighting. When they had live action film, I had like, you know, sort of nameless dude or, you know, guy dressed up as a black ninja so we can reuse him later on. They have, oh, it's you, K- Kang Lu. <laughs> Oh wow! <laughs> More like Kang loser, right? And then all his guys laughed, and he beats the hell out of them. The closest uh, thing I can think of is when the actor that played Liu Kang in the in the Mortal Kombat movies came back as Gen in Street Fighter: The Legend of Chun Li. I thought they would do something with that. Like it can't be a like you hired the guy that played Liu Kang to be in your Mortal Kombat. It's to be in your Street Fighter movie. I should say. And I'm like, I thought there'd be something there. Like he would say, like, hey, listen, this is street fighting, not make believe like, I don't know, Mortal Kombat. You know, but right. they didn't. So, yeah, it, but I think it's way too inside baseball for the movie companies to really care about it. Yeah. Oh, you know, hey, if I wanted a Street Fighter knockoff, I'd play Fighters Dynamite or whatever. Jeez. That's why I don't, <laughs> Jeez. That's why I I don't write Fighters. films. I love Fighters Dynamite. Um, <laughs> I love Keo... that they beat Capcom in court. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I, I hope back in the past they would have beaten them. Uh, Keo has to fight various boss phases of Rugal, who, again, <laughs> I don't know, he does a baseball thing. Even though he's wearing, like, martial arts gear, he starts just throwing fastballs and starts hitting them via a baseball bat. And I don't, I don't, I don't know what they're going for. Why more sports stuff? I have to assume at this point, it's some type of sports team, uh, cameo Easter egg, whatever you want to call it. Because again, his Rugal, aside from genocide cutter, when has Rugal ever showed any interest in sports? Has he, has he ever? No, he hasn't. Uh, no, and I think I'm going to make up something completely ridiculous and say Ray Park showed up in no mm. condition to perform. And it was this <laughs> lengthy fight sequence, and he went, oh, sod it, can I just throw balls at him? Yeah, yeah, it's easier than like like me f- uh, flipping all over the place or attaching me via wires. Let me just hit a baseball. Yeah, um, I- I'm, I'm busy today. I have to upload a video of me and my wife. <laughs> Sorry. Um, it, it's fine. Um, <laughs> my fights off the homeless army, uh, the homeless army, uh, while well, Mr. Bogard, who now has shown up and is now donning a cheap Halloween store version of his classic costume, takes on Vice and Mature. Now, I did do a video of this uh, way back in the day where I took a clip of this fight uh, where uh, Terry takes on Vice and Mature and I just replaced all the sound effects with Terry Bogard's like game sound effects. So every power, like he throws a bag of trash at someone, that's a power geyser. Uh, he does a little punch uh, or a kick. He does, um, you know, crack shoot. And it's one of my most proud, like I am proud of this video is completely scrubbed off the internet. Uh, no one has ever re-uploaded it, and it was back on an old laptop, circa 2011. So I, I lamented death, unfortunately. 
I think I saw not the video, but like the thumbnail for the video. And I'm like, oh, it was like King of Fighters live action. I went, I don't want to see it. <laughs> like, I love you and part. everything. But I'm like, all right, you know what? The idea of that is, <laughs> is nice, but I'm like, I don't want to be reminded of this. Yeah, it's fine. You know, I, I don't blame you. Thanks um, for admitting it, though. You could have been a good man and gone. You know what? I, n- I never right? did that. There's no proof of that, Your Honor. <laughs> Uh, Iori, who has decided to not listen to anybody, uh, jumps into the fray regardless and uh, fights Rugal for a bit before he gets tagged in. Uh, so it's it's like Iori and Rugal for the third time, and Iori fails for the third time. Um, and I like, I really love all the After Effects fire that they added to Rugal and Yori's bodies here. It only really happens for this scene, but he just gets all these, like, green and just green. That's, that's, that's fucking, uh, what's his face? The one character everyone hates from King of Fighters. What's his name? Oh, uh, Ash Crimson. Ash Crimson. Uh, gets a little bit of ash on him, and that's that's the only scene. Um, and I think Chizuru dies at some point. Does Chizuru die? She, she dies somehow, somewhere, in some point. I don't know. Wait until Ayo returns, so his so his back is facing the camera, and have him just right. say, "Chizuru, stop breathing." <laughs> um, um, yeah, you're right. We'll, I'll, I'll cut up with my notes. You're doing such a good job. I think I'll interrupt uh, and ruin do. things. Um, so. They decide Kyoto had to go in with his sword to yeah. a dimension to stop Rugal. That's the thing that Rugal needs to open the door. So he's got he's done exactly what he wants him to, so that's fantastic. But what's the motivation of the plot now? Rugal yeah. without the sword is now so powerful he's able to merge the realms together <laughs> to help him open a door. He sounds pretty powerful already, and everyone is trouncing him. Uh, Mai ends up I put the comfy chair, and then Terry shows up with his gear on from the game, and I've put here, yay. And even with uh, <laughs> no text, I think I was being sarcastic. Rugal shows up kind of dressed like Gonitz from King of Fighters 96, but again, bit. I might be putting some uh, you know, uh, credit there it doesn't deserve. And Shizura says this world ain't real, but Rugal's going to merge them. Blah, 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 what? All right. Rugal fights Kyo dressed as his dad. Which is yeah. a nice itch touch again, Freddy Krueger style mental head mess. Mind oh. games. That's right. In your house, ten. <laughs> Apparently, <laughs> Kyo's dad nearly tried to kill him because he was brainwashed. Hey, that happened in 1995, and those are probably Shizuru's <laughs> last words before she flatlined. <laughs> it's 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 so weird because they they try to condense like like you just outline they had to condense so much KOF stuff so quickly and I can't even tell if some of it's intentional or some of it's not I feel like some of it, some decisions that are made here are just generic enough that they would fit into any like fighting movie or something but it's it's just so unclear but a lot of stuff happens during this in general and you know my and Terry are just beating up on Vice and Mature while all this is happening with uh, Kyo, Iori, and Rugal. I think but the Kyo then tags back in and that flashback scene occurs showing like how Rugal, how everyone began to hate Rugal because of the Orochi. And then Mai jumps back in and Iori, who is now blind with Orori, Orochi juice, Attacks her, and then Keo blades him. He just spills out on the floor. And then lots of black ooze and smoke, and Noob Sabat comes out of Iori's throat. And I guess that's the Orochi force leaving him, yeah? Sure. <laughs> yeah, sure. At this point, sure. Why not? Um, yeah. Uh, Iori and Rugal face off. And a side on, like in the games, and a voiceover says, round one. Thought that was worth pointing out. But but why there? It never did that before. So you got the voiceover going, hey, that's in the games. <laughs> but you realize that it's like 
in Mortal Kombat, the movie, Shang Tsung instantly starts saying as soon as matches start, he goes, flawless victory, and, like, finish him, and, like, fatality, like, he start like, as soon as the tournament starts off. Yeah. He does it proper, like, and he does it until about, like, when Liu Kang beats him and says, flawless victory, even though Liu Kang took lots of hits beforehand, and it was not a flawless victory, sir. Good day. But you know what? When he did it, it was cool. <laughs> Fair enough. Him saying those lines was cool because he's watching things. He's kind of omnipresent. He's saying all these stuff. He's got lightning eyes. It's fantastic. When Raul Julia ad-libbed, <laughs> game over. That was cool. It was Them cool. facing off like in the games with some dude saying round one out of nowhere and no one acknowledging it is <laughs> not cool. It's not on the same level. And then not lighting really. the flames like in the game. That's Kyo and Iori's thing. Uh, Kyo defends Iori, so Rugal yells more plot, with Rugal <laughs> fighting Kusanagi's dad, Iori, and Shizuru. Yay, three on one like in the games. Until Iori gets pissy and starts wrecking Kyo's dad. <laughs> yeah. And Kyo stabs him, which releases the Orokai. That's not how it works. And then <laughs> he decides to take all of them in another dark alley. Yeah, because what you want with a low budget is to highlight the fact that you have a low budget. Like, let's transport into the back set of Batman Forever or Batman or Batman and Robin because it just it just back alley sets like that are just so like late nineties, early two thousands fodder. Like, oh, you know, just put just just put in a back alley. Now, fair enough. Lots of King of Fighters or Street Fighter like stages have just in like an alley stage and I get that but there's no there's no actual stage that looks familiar like again they're kind of doing themselves a favor by doing this dimensional hopping stuff anything can happen you don't really have to explain it to the audience so much other than anything can happen when you go this dimension so why not recreate like some iconic king of fighter stages I guess because all we have is a back alley stage. I don't know, but it just seems like a wasted opportunity. Like, oh, let's just let's just go to this one alley. But like, you could do anything with this plot premise you've set up with the dimensional stuff, and they just don't use it to its full potential. They're doing what they can with the ten million <laughs> Canadian <laughs> dollars. <laughs> and you are right in a way they're knackered because the King of Fighters, I believe, <laughs> the deliberate aesthetic was to have. Uh, Stadiums, arenas, and stuff, as right. uh, you know, as the backdrop, as opposed to Street Fighter Two, where they're fighting in the streets. Yeah. Well, at least they're supposed to be. As someone did a thing on Twitter a while ago, there's not actually a lot of streets in Street Fighter Two, yeah, but you know, couple, the theory is there. Yeah, and the most of them aren't. Yeah, there is, you know, back alley, <laughs> Las Vegas, whereas King Fighters is like, well, no, it's the, the, there's some person said, I'm going to hold a big tournament. Want to come? And they're like, oh boy. And these guys showed up. It was a dark alley. They go, oh, <laughs> this looks like a Ray Parks tournament. <laughs> um, so we we have a bunch of special effects here uh, with with the fight of Rugal. Everyone just, just teaming up on them. And they're straight off the hottest, new, most cutting edge PlayStation 2 game. This is King of Fighters maximum impact levels of stuff that's that, that's <laughs> happening onto them. It's just just shitloads of fire and electricity. But it only really appears like here. It's they were they were pretty choosy with where they want to put these special effects because I guess the budget was 10 million Canadian dollars. Um and they all get the smart idea that uh, they need to use the sacred treasures to to trap Rugal. Like that's that's the trick to him. But it's unclear. Like he's just simply too powerful and just just knocks them all off. And Ter- by the way, Terry is just beating up homeless people. By the way, during all this, he's not part of this, which I guess he shouldn't be. Right? It should be all the three families, the three sacred treasures. Terry's not picking up the, the fucking Kusanagi sword. It makes no sense. But they knew they had to have him in somewhere, so beat up homeless people. Terry himself is homeless. So you think, he, like in the games, so you think he'd have some type of, you know, uh, feelings towards them. But no, he just beats up everybody. Throws trash bags at them. It's, it's kind of sad. Yeah, there's... 
they had to have something for him to do. And you're right, amongst all this going on, there's only two families. Uh, uh, what's their name? Uh, Yagami and uh, Kusanagi. Kusanagi. So, but there's three treasures. So you're right. Terry Bogart should have just taken the sword and gone, <laughs> you know what? I'm the king of fighters. I completely <laughs> ruined kayfabe forever. <laughs> He should have shot during the film and gone, you know what, this is crap. <laughs> I'm going to make a film with Keanu Reeves. For himself. <laughs> Terry Bogard, King of Fighters. He's like, no, no, Terry Bogard, Fatal Fury. He's like, oh, suck this. Yeah, um, yeah there's a lot going on. He's having to fight poems. He, they resist the temptation to have him go, help me, the, the bums are revolting. He goes, I know, I can smell them from here. Uh, well done for showing some restraint. Respect a them little there. bit. I'm, I'm actually shocked. Yeah, but um, at the same time, okay, again, I'll go through the plot again. Rugal yeah. shows up and goes, I want the King of Fighters Orakai power. Give me the three treasures. And he just shoots some people and takes them. Uh, it's a fake sword. Well, <laughs> I guess I'll go on this King of Fighters dimension and wait for everybody to show up. Oh, they, they actually did, even though they were warned not to. Fantastic. <laughs> go out and tell people to come in. Wow, lots of people came in and now I'm really strong enough to merge the dimensions. Wow, Kyo brought the sword to me. Even better, we're in the climatic scene and the all brought the treasures to me. This is the easiest job. <laughs> Everybody is stupid, apart from Rugal, who is just evil and a bad actor. It's, it's, they play into his hands, basically, and I guess, I guess that's the point. But when you you disregard the tournament structure, like it just it just makes it a free for all. It makes it a battle royale at this point, where and because remember when Vice Mature fought Rugal, they were like, "Oh, that's weird. That's different. It's like two versus one," and you you get rid of all the rules, and then yeah, the tournament's just basically thrown out the window. You know, and a lot of things, no one has the patience to structure a tournament like in street fighter the movie there was no real tournament it wasn't part of it mortal Kombat mm-hmm. there was but it was it was it was kind of sussy how like the tournament played out it's like there's like three or four matches no i want to see brackets i want to i want to to actually follow along but this it kind of it kind of does away with all of it but um during all of this you know rugel i guess gets powered up Keo gets knocked aside and he decides to start thinking about stuff really hard. And that sufficiently powers Keo up with like pro tag fuel. And he's just able to material. Okay. Is this him materializing the real Kusanagi sword from thin air or is it his own sword? Like, what is it? It was just dying for like his son, his, his dad to appear, yeah. like in blue, like my son. The sword was in you this whole time. <laughs> really? He's like, yes, that's why he turned Caucasian. Oh, okay, <laughs> that makes sense. Cheers, dad. No problem, son. Yeah, he just somehow makes a sword. After I'll give him credit, Shizuru uses her mirror skills like in '96, mm. uh, and you're like, oh, that's nice. And then <laughs> Rugal throws a car, like Brock Lesnar getting annoyed at a kid in the front row. Um, but then, yeah, my jumps it dramatically, and Rugal punches her in the back into a big pile of rubbish, or as we call it, three-count bout. <laughs> oh, uh, okay, I love three-count bout. Don't even hate Oh, uh, Look, I love SNK and fighting games and wrestling games, but for some reason, the planets do not align with that. Um, fair enough, Still fair stuck enough. in that mash-the-pad-when-you-grapple thing where it's virtually unplayable. Uh, anyway, we'll move on to more pressing matters, like the live-action King of Fighters film from 2010. <laughs> um, Chizuru dies, I guess, and turns into pigeons and says, Mai needs to assume her destiny to take her place. What? But Mai's the main character now. <laughs> oh, they had a thing? There was a connection? There was a plot? Uh, oh, okay. Uh, yeah, all the guy goes into him. Uh, just as he's dying or getting locked away, the Okai goes into him and he breaks the sword. So now Rugal is mad. He's mad, wet, and angry. Uh, Kyo <laughs> falls into even more rubbish. Oh, I'll use my three count pouts, so I'll just be polite and move on. Please uh, do. And after tra- dramatizing the flames, makes a new sword out of the power of love, I guess. <laughs> and then I love this. And then slices Rugal in half and then explodes. Ha <laughs> ha! 
Okay, I have here, I have here right here, Rugal explodes like a vampire in Blade 1, despite the fact that this looks way worse than Blade 1, which was filmed 13 years in the past. In the script, it just says, Rugal explodes, and some guy in pen has just written, question mark, question mark, why does he, why does he explode on sliced in half? I don't get it. Um, uh, I like to think this was an homage to when you beat Shao Kahn in Mortal Kombat 3. And he explodes with such force that he travels through different dimensions does, before exploding, does. which is one of my favorite ways, uh, my favorite things in Mortal Kombat. Yeah, that's a good one. Um, but yeah, so Rugal dies. Um, <laughs> we then cut to Computer Nerd placing a lantern in the water as a tribute to Jizuru, oh, despite, the, despite the fact that the uh, the water current refuses to take direction <laughs> and it just stays where it is. It's so, tradition in it's, Seattle. <laughs> but, like, okay, I get that he, like, like work with Jizuru, but it felt really weird. This nerd gets, like, tons of play. Um, the, imagine if they, they said, like, oh, this is actually, like, oh, God, I don't even know. This is actually, like, a real KOF character, but they just make him into a computer nerd. Like, yeah, you said Shingo earlier. Yeah, it's Shingo, right? So Shingo places it. The water current refuses to take uh, direction on set. And Kyo says he'll continue fighting into the tournament as its tradition. And everyone just kind of makes awkward noises at this. Mai's just like, yeah, that's okay. And Terry just goes, eh. <laughs> they were like, I think they would, they would get in the script together and they were like, this will be the bit where someone says something really deep and meaningful. Profound. And then they got to filming it and they were looking and going, oh. <laughs> and the guy's like, sorry, I just thought something would inspire us, but... <laughs> Well, what do you mean? What are you inspired to do? Is this, I think I'm going to quit and join a covenant after this. <laughs> the camera, yeah, the, after that, the camera stays on Keo for a long time. He just looks around with this confused expression. And then the movie has the sheer audacity to set up something, set up some type of sequel, and it zooms on Iori's face, Promising more King of Fighters films that were never filmed. Um, no, 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 wait, 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 wait. I've got to interrupt. Yeah. No, they say goodbye to Shizuru. His dead dad shows up, says, yes. I love you. Sorry. I love you, my son. In case we forgot. <laughs> and we get the dead man's speech. And how. I thought you were going to say the audacity, because I've always said this the audacity to bring up the you must be like water speech like, yeah. by Bruce fucking Lee. That poor man has had enough bad films made in his memory while King of Fighters joining in the gang pile as well. He doesn't need Sean Ferris to be the new Bruce Lee. That's it. You know what? They went, well, what should we say? What should the, the big closing thing be? Something. We can't just say, well, that's my mama, you know. <laughs> <laughs> King of Fighters. Where's so, the beef? <laughs> it was me, Austin. It was me all along. <laughs> <laughs> it's me, Kyo. And it just shows geese. Dude, here's the thing. If wait, wait, they... wait, no, wait. His, what, his, what? His dad shows up and says, I love you. He goes, beware, oblivion is at hand. <laughs> <laughs> but, but for reals, if they had somehow alluded to Geese Howard, I'd be well into this. But... I, I don't know. They show like a guy that looks like he's just standing like on the edge of like a, a precipice somewhere. I don't know. And he's just like, <laughs> or like says that he'll wash his hands with your blood that I would have been like, Oh, cause I love geese so much, but they don't. And they just zoom in on Iori's face, which I guess they alluded to properly in the film where they're like, Oh, our destinies are entwined and we're, we're going to, we're going to hate each other and fight each other. So that's fine too, but if they had alluded to geese, I'd at least get really hyped for that. But they, yeah, they just they just zoom in on Yuri's face and cut to credits and 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 we're out. So um. <laughs> you're right, Matt. I think you're on something here. The by the water, and so after that little thing eventually floats away. I guess they have yeah. to like pick up and throw it. 
Like, go away. Go go to go to heaven or whatever this is supposed to symbolize already. Um like like, oh that was lovely. We could walk by. Wow. Look at the geese. And they and like <laughs> Like Keo could be like, well, oh, I don't conk. see any geese. And then all you hear is. Because <laughs> they do play like this, the generic guitar theme when it zooms in on, on Iori's face. And, but you could, all right. You could have Iori have a scene where he's like with them, like uh, giving Shizuru her little lantern that refuses to move into the water. And he could just turn away. And walks away and it shows um, Iori giving like a knowing look. But then after that, if they then just filmed what you just described, then, oh, I'd be so in. Here's the thing. It's like you can have this really bad movie, but if you have these really cheesy like allusions to other stuff, like I'm I'm super into that. So if someone says, I don't see any geese. Dun, 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 dun. <laughs> oh. I'd no, even better. Turner, even better. We'll merge what happens. I already staring, and he's just like, "Well, I don't have the orakai anymore." <laughs> now that that bastard cut out of me, fuck it, I'll just turn into geese. <laughs> <laughs> or I already, I already for no reason. <laughs> 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 Or when they say, <laughs> Kyo, what are you going to do? What are you going to do? And then Kyo goes, I'm going to I'm gonna continue the tradition and fight in the King of Fighters. And then it just cuts to Terry going, predictable. But they didn't. I'm sorry, I've cracked myself up. For no That's inexplicably, fine. For inexplicably no reason. He just looks at the camera and turns into Kyo. <laughs> And no one says anything. As if it, there's no guitar riff. There's no explanation. There's no Diablo. He just he just looks at the camera's like, oh, now I am Geese Howard. The end. I am now Geese Howard. I have to go back to my home planet. <laughs> oh god, I'm sorry. I'm crap myself up. No, that's oh, really good. Oh shit. Because <laughs> you have the, the the dimension thing, right? So anything can be possible. So you could just he puts on the uh, little earpiece and he just turns into Geese Howard. Why not? <laughs> so that's that. So that's the King of Fighters, <laughs> 2010. <laughs> oh shit! Uh, oh. It is it is in oh. stores now. On DVD, oh. Blu-ray, and available in VOD, I believe. I don't know. It took me a long... I have a DVD copy of this, right, that oh. I bought, like, a long time ago. But I don't have a computer that has, like, a, a a CD or DVD drive. So, like, I had to find... It's very hard to actually find to, like, be able to watch it legally. Um, I don't think... I think it's out on American Netflix, but I'm not sure, but... I think we did a really good job at showing the the movie's uh, many virtues. Uh, what do you think? Uh, yeah, I'd like to point out. Sorry, I know it sounds like oh, it's really hard to get hold of. It's uh, I watched it for th- like three pound fifty on Amazon Prime. Yeah, it's um, not on. It's not on Amazon Prime for me. Yeah, you know, I, I had the I had the bit where, you know, my version of Amazon Prime. I'm sure it happened for you, but at the end when you know the thing just. <laughs> goes to Japanese heaven and it looks and they yeah. always look and it goes I am now going to turn into Wolfgang Krauser his hair turns purple and we <laughs> sprouts the film just ends very weird I don't know why that I'll oh, chisel God. your gravestone sleep well <laughs> like classic music play it's very nice touch very very Kubrick um, just, just grows like three feet extra yes uh I, I wrote some things here. Yes, I think we Please. overanalyzed the fuck out of it with the intent of amusing <laughs> and informing. Um, I wrote down here, maybe we could make like Ash Crimson and pretend this never happened. <laughs> because uh, there's a whole plot seen... where they lose Ash Crimson and then they went, you know what, people hate him so much, we'll just wipe him out of existence. And I've that never the main seen plot. someone get wiped out so hard than Ash Crimson. They're... Didn't they say he's even a dream... Or like he he uh, he just got written out of existence at the end of thirteen. <laughs> yes, it just it, there was such an enormous backlash that people had whip whiplash forms 
that's tied for this. It was like, oh, you guys really don't like this fucking guy. It's like, there's no plot in King of Fighters now, apart from this fucking idiot. Like, it was a side character, yeah, but, you know. That is King of Fighters uh, 2010. Um, Wait, I've got more. I, I, uh, I've wrote down more. here. I've got down here <laughs> my four-word <laughs> review. Yes, please. King Mabel of Fighters. Why? Why, Mabel? Uh, and my last thing, and I'll let you talk. If, yes. If this film ended any flatter, AJ Styles would be convinced it was Earth. <laughs> no, I don't. I don't think the Earth is flat, but there's something about it. So, uh, with that, uh, thank you very much, <sighs> uh, Lord of England. Uh, Sir Matthew oh, for thank you. Uh, reviewing. <laughs> God, I'm dying. He's sound, he sound very spent. Uh, thank you, Matthew, for for uh, entering the fighting game theater with me this uh, tonight. <laughs> I, I I immensely enjoyed that. Now, I'm not going to say this is the worst like adaptation of a fighting game, because because it's not because there's so much silly shit that happens into it so it's not boring by any stretch of the imagination i think if you have anybody that is even passingly familiar with king of fighters and or fatal fury i think you i think you can make a virtual night out with this just everyone everyone grab a version of the film and watch it together i th- i think there's definitely some fun to be had rather than stuff where it's it's just kind of boring there is bits of this movie that are that are actually boring to watch usually plot dumps where people just keep talking and talking but other than that i think there is a cheesy fun to be had with this how how do you feel yeah i'll give them the two uh the idea of having the (laughs) fight is sorry sorry (laughs) i'm trying to be serious they the idea of the fighters uh, dimension thing is one that could have worked better if they you know, stuck to a plan rather than go, well, how can we get this character and how can we have a Duck King show up and go, hey, guys, it's me, <laughs> Duck King, and all the other stuff they got too wrapped up in. Uh, but they just, you know, lost control. And it's actually like the first five minutes where you get the impression <laughs> it's going to be a film where people meet up and have fights and then just go about their days like it's Grinder. And there's this awkward <laughs> bit where Mai's like, oh, wait, I love this person, but I need to kick his ass in the game. And then there's the drama. You oh, think no. that's what that's going to be the film? And then Rugal, yeah. Rugal shows up and goes, I don't know where I'm from. Dugga, dugga, dugga. <laughs> and then he just falls away from there. So I'll give them a turn. It's not, yeah, you're right. There's, I've seen way worse films than this. Uh, so, and the fact that I'm getting to, to watch it with you, Matt McMuscles, is fine. It is there worth mentioning, though, if, if someone would ask me the question and no one is, uh, how would you adapt King of Fighters as a film? I wouldn't. Uh, <laughs> there are bits of the plot, sure, but they they make a fighting game interesting. They explain why Kyo and Iori hate each other. They explain what happened with Rugal, why he he blew himself up in 95 and keeps on coming back, why he had Kyo's dad possessed and all this, why Billy Kane goes... <laughs> It says all the things he says and all the stuff like that. That's there to emphasize that. If someone goes, this will make a great film. You're like, are you out of your fucking mind? How, how would that work exactly? Um, so I wouldn't adapt it. the cast is so big. Yeah. So when you try to pare it down to just like the couple of characters, it's, it's always going to like sort of fall apart because the tournament is part of the allure and if you just try to break it down to like the Orochi stuff then it's it's not going to hold up because the games were never meant to hold up in that way it was just like a background fodder for like a little bit of a story so whenever you tried exactly right like how would you adapt to king of the fire i would i would not do that street fighter especially the first couple i can kind of see yeah, there, there's something there. You can make a plot out of there. But King of Fighters is just like almost unintelligible with all the characters and like possible backgrounds of all of them. So it it, it it was a fruitless endeavor from the start. Yes, and God bless them. Uh, <laughs> at least if they did something like Fatal Fury 1, it's like, oh no, yeah. the bow guards are getting messed with with geese. And actually the, uh, the animated adaptation of Fatal Fury, the first one, I think it's all right. It's, it's all right. Yeah, I did ever, a review but, you know. of it myself and... 
even Fatal Fury 2, the animation, it's like, oh, Terry gets beaten, like the hero from the first movie gets beaten down at the start, and then it's all Rocky IV up, in, up until that point. And that works. The Fatal Fury movie, yeah, not so much, but uh, the first two, I think, are, are fine adaptations of the basic storyline. Yeah, even when sexy Wolfgang Krauser shows up, you're like, ah, well, whatever. Um, yeah, that can work. King of Fighters where let's all get together and have an orgy of punching. It's like, okay, <laughs> that would be good, but we have the budget of 10 million Canadian dollars. <laughs> so why not use it? Why, why not use it to the best of our ability? For some but reason, like, I yeah. thought that would be a good closing line. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you for saying something. Um, it, it, you know what? With that, with that, we will close. Uh, thank you so much, uh, Matthew, for uh, hanging out with me on this. Uh, absolute pleasure as always. Where can people, if they choose to find you, where can they find you? Best place right now is on Twitter, twitter.com forward slash Mafu Greg, M A W F, ha ha, E W G R E double G, ha ha. <laughs> and it's also the Botchamania Facebook page, facebook.com forward slash Botchamania. Yes, that's right. I got there early. And botchmedia.com sometimes works, but right now it doesn't. So hopefully, Matt Muscles will take forever to get this uploaded and it'll be fixed. If not, disregard. <laughs> it, might, it might take a while because, yeah, we have we have a lot to cut to for, for this episode. A lot, a lot of cut-ins on, like, a bunch of uh, Canadian dollar bills I'm going to have to put in <laughs> to uh, signify the $10 million amount. But, uh, yeah, that is another episode of the Fighting Game Theater in the Bag. Um, I really hope I can see you next time. The Await Your Return, Warrior.